Hey, welcome back to the Serato DJ Light tutorial series on how to get started as a DJ for free. My name is Jamie Hartley from Crossfader and in today's lesson we're going to take the Crossfader music pack that we downloaded previously and organized and start listening to that music. We need to understand some basic music theory as DJs before we actually start mixing. I'm now going to explain what beats, bars and phrases are around the time signature of music. Does that sound a bit confusing? Don't worry, I'm going to break it right down. This is well worth learning right at the start of your DJ journey when you're learning to DJ. This music theory is going to come in very handy throughout all of the skills you're going to learn as a DJ and it's one of the foundation things to really get your head around. Let's take a closer look and more importantly listen to some of the music that we've got in the Crossfader music pack. So most of the music that you're going to want to mix or DJ with and all of the music within the Crossfader music pack is structured in something called 4x4 time signature. Now what does that mean? Let's explain that a little bit further. I'm going to have to make some room though. You can follow along and listen more importantly to what the music is doing as we play it. First of all, timing in music. A beat is a length of time. If we just play this for a second, that is called one beat in music. You can hear two sounds, but the length of time in music equals one beat. Times that by four, that equals a bar. Four beats equals one bar. How does that relate to the phrasing? Because it's in 4x4 four four time signature, we can take that one bar and work it in multiples of four. Now there are all different lengths of phrase. You could have a four bar phrase, but it's not very common. You could have an eight bar phrase, which is more common. The most common, however, in a lot of the music you're going to listen to and play with is 16 bars. Every 16 bars in the music, something will change and something will happen. It all works in those multiples of four. Let's count along in beats and bars and listen in particular to what happens to the music every 16 bars, i.e. every 16 bar phrase. Two, three, four, two bars, two, three, four, three bars, four bars, five bars, six bars, seven bars, eight, two, three, four, nine, two, three, four, did you hear that? 11, 2, 3, 4, 12, 2, 3, 4, 13 bars, 14 bars, 15 bars, and 16, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. Did you hear that change there? That indicates a new phrase has started and one has finished. That was 16 bars later. The next main phrase will be where the breakdown comes in. And we can start counting again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5 bars, 6 bars, 7 bars, and 8, 2, 3, 4, drop, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5 bars, 6 bars, 7 bars, 8, 2, 3, 4, 9, 2, 3, 4, 10, 2, 3, 4, 11 bars, 12 bars, 13, 14, 15, 2, 3, 4, and 16, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. And as you can hear, it carries on adding and taking away elements of music. We had an 8 bar breakdown before the track dropped in. So that was a smaller phrase. But then after it dropped in, we had 16 bars of a very similar loop. After 16 bars, it added new drums and it starts building up. And then 16 bars later, it'll probably break down again. This happens throughout most music. So I really encourage you to go and listen to as much music as possible and start counting along in your head and listening to in particular what happens to that music every eight and 16 bars. Now we're going to put this into practice and figure out why this is important when it comes to mixing two songs together. Let's move up to the software and start blending some tracks using our phrasing. Now that you have an idea around how basic phrasing works within music, we're going to check out how it works when we mix and blend between two different tracks. I'm going to load Shake That, Josh Hunter and Lewis Roper onto the left hand player and Livesey, I Wonder onto the right hand player. Both can be found in the house crate. Now these two tracks are originally the same BPM. We can see 126 and 126. So we don't need to do anything with the BPMs. Now we need to get comfortable with these plus and minuses to nudge the track to make sure it goes in time. Let's test how this phrasing works between these two different tracks. Now I'm going to go towards the last drop of Shake That, so that last main drop and this phrase. And then as it drops in, we're going to leave the crossfader in the middle, hit enter to launch I Wonder. 
If it needs a little adjustment, we're going to play around with the plus and the minus to try and get it to sound nice and smooth and on time. Let's test this out. Getting ready. So as you can hear, this is slightly out of time. Use the plus. And we can tell now it sounds much cleaner and much nicer. As you can hear there, there was a phrase change. I wonder has added more instruments in and shake that. It's starting to work towards the outro. Getting ready for the next phrase in three, two, one, and change. We can now start working the crossfader to eliminate Shake That and blend into I Wonder by Liv We can do this quite slowly because the track is building up ready for the drop. It then drops in just in time. And that's all thanks to the phrasing of the music. Let's stop both tracks there. Let's test this theory again with another two tracks within the Tech House crate. I'm going to load in Resolution and Get to Work. Resolution by Ryan Murray on the left hand side and Get to Work by Understate on the right hand side. Now the original speed of these two tracks are different. Resolution is 123 and Get to Work is 125. So we can actually manually drag the BPM counter up to 125 or alternatively, we can use the sync button to synchronize the two tracks. Now, even though we've synchronized the two tracks, it does its best job at lining the beats up, but we still may need to use the plus and the minus to actually get the tracks nice and tight and on time. This might take a little bit of practice, and this is about getting your timing and training your ear to know what's right and what's wrong. Starting with res resolution and going towards the last drop, we're going to set the track off there. Move the crossfader all the way to the left-hand side so we won't actually be able to hear the track on the right hand side when we set it off yet, we're going to blend it in. I'm getting ready with the enter key and I'm going to set off Get to Work as it drops in. Set it off, try and set it off in time. If not, we can use the waveform to just check and see whether the beats are lined up. This will be more obvious when we get into the mix by blending the crossfader. Now let's start moving the crossfader to the right hand side Introducing Get To Work. We can hear it starting to appear in the mix. And then when we get to the centre, let's leave it there for a bit. It's quite nice to leave it in the centre and have the two tracks playing with one another. And then on the next phrase, we're going to start mixing out and blending all the way into Get To Work. Hold it there a little bit longer and get ready. Three, two, start to blend. All the way to the right therefore eliminating resolution on the left hand side. And there we have it, it's building up, about to drop, we can stop resolution, ready to load our next track, and there we have a nice smooth transition. Thank you so much for watching and taking part in this tutorial series. If you want to watch the next lesson straight away, just click the thumbnail or it'll be in the description. I look forward to helping you start your own DJ journey.